Really quick announcement before we get into the video. As you know, I have been selling these blue Rampage Poker custom chips for $5 each, and that's been going really well and gotten a lot of interest in that. Happy to announce these gray bad boys here. So uh, definitely happy to say that I've got another color in the mix. So these both look amazing. Thirdly, these metal chips are amazing. Super excited about these and I'm really happy with how they came out. These are actual metal coin card protectors that you can bring and uh, they've got some weight to them too. So super happy and excited to announce these ones that I'm selling for $15. So if you're interested in supporting the channel, would really appreciate it. Feel free to shoot me an email. I don't have a personal website just yet, um, but I should probably get working on that. So we've got these three going. Um, I've learned the hard way that shipping is super expensive. So any order less than $25, I have to throw in a $3 shipping cost, but feel free to shoot me an email. I'll send you all the info needed to how to mail this out your way, but really appreciate everyone's support on the channel so far and having the opportunity to have some merch items. And I hope that you guys are just as excited as I am. So um, definitely looking to get some of these guys out to you. Moving forward, all of the chip giveaways will include one of each that will be sent out. So um, that'll be super cool and fun thing for this video giving out five just because I'm announcing this. So picking five random people that will get one of each of the blue, gray, and metal coin chips. So leave a comment on the video, picking five of you guys. And if you wanna buy one and support the channel, would really appreciate that, shoot me an email. What's going on everyone, it's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to another video on the channel. Unfortunately, yes, I am a Red Sox fan. It's not a good season to be a Red Sox fan today, but today we have a super special video because Boston Billiard right now where I'm playing at, there is a 510 promo today. So we're expecting a ton of different 510 tables going on. They occasionally do these 510 promos very often. Uh, usually they run two different PLO 510 games per week. And today this is a 510 no limit hold'em one. So we're expecting a few different tables, plenty of action, should be a good time. Um, you guys love seeing these big pots and watching me squirm and try to navigate them. So. Wish us luck, hopefully it'll go well. Uh, we actually, I'm, I'm gonna jinx myself. We haven't had a losing 5-10 session yet since the first time playing at Twin River and that was an absolute disaster. So wish us luck, hopefully the 5-10 run good will continue. And yeah, hopefully variance is on my side yet again. And this should be a really interesting one. So if, if you wanna be a part of the next 510 day or promo day, uh, go ahead and check out their social media, Boston Billiard Club, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, they usually post a bunch of their stuff there, but besides that, let's get into the video. We hop into the 510, it's a 1K max buy-in, and the first hand, we looked down at pocket fives in the cutoff. I opened a $30, and the player on my left immediately three bets us to $100. It folds back to me and he's on the button. I have pocket fives. Ah, uh, fine. There's a lot of three betting going on in this game and here just gonna have to defend with pocket fives and set mine. Let's try to get lucky. Flop comes, jack five three, rainbow. Welcome to the table. We fought middle sets. I obviously will check to the three better. PC bets $125 and on such a super dry flop, I am happy to just make the call. Going to a turn, which comes a deuce, brings in the full rainbow. I check. Unfortunately, um, no action ensues. He just checks it back. The river now comes a jack, so we boat up now. I think it's really unlikely that he has a jack, but I guess like sometimes he can pot control and check on the turn there with top pair, but I don't feel too confident that he has trips here in this spot. But uh, regardless, I can't let the action go check check. I bet $300, he snap folds, and I guess we're going to take down this first pot of the day. Quick mid-session updates. So, <laughs> we played 510 for about 30 minutes, flopped the set that one hand, and the table is not for us. It's just filled with crushers, and uh, I think we're going to leave and probably play lower, 1-3 or 2-5. Hopefully, later on during the day or during the night, more people will troll in. We'll hop back into the 510 action. But for now, for this one main table going, I hate leaving, but uh, you just got to do what you got to do when the whole table is filled with people a million times better than you. I can't be donking off money like this. So I don't know what my numbers are, but I was in for a thousand and out for X amount you'll see here. Hopping into the 1-3 or 2-5 game, we'll stay tuned.
Moving down to 1-3, we look down at pocket queens in the small blind with an under the gun straddle. The plus one player didn't know there was a straddle, so he just opens up the action to $12 and folds back to me. So $12 is a pretty normal raise for 1-3, but um, with the straddle there, obviously, we're going to be three betting regardless. We size up to $40, action folds around to him, and he does make the call for $40. We're going to a flop, which comes Jack-10-6 Rainbow. It is a very okay board for us. I don't necessarily love it, because it's not super, super dry. But here, out of position, I decided to balance with my overpair and check. Um, he thinks about betting. He grabs some chips in his hands and ends up just checking it back, interestingly enough. So we're going to a turn. Turn comes a queen. This is a super interesting spot now. With top sets, a lot more connected of a board. Here, I bet $50, just trying to get some more money in there. Um, he thinks about it and makes the call for $50. Off to a river. The river is in ace. Yuck. This is gross. Not the river we're looking for, but still with the set. Can I ever get value from some sort of two pair holdings? Not really sure what kind of holdings it would be since he did check the flop, but I go for some thin value and bet $60. He tanks for quite some time now, and after a minute or two of tanking, he ends up putting in the call. I show my hand, and it looks like we're good as he shows ace jack. So got some very slim value there on the river, and definitely missed some value on the flop. Next hand, we pick up ace king in the cutoff, and here another straddled pot with the button straddle. Both blinds make the call, action's onto me, here definitely raising, I size up to $30, the button folds, and the small blind and big blind both make the call interestingly enough. Off to a flop, which comes queen jack 8 2 spades. Action checks to me, and with ace king in position, we totally whiff this flop, I guess we're just gonna have to check to just pot control and not necessarily have to bluff at this all the time. Turn comes the ace of clubs, brings in a backdoor flush draw, and once again action checks to me. Certainly going to have to bet here with ace king. So I size to $55. The small blind gets out of the way and the big blind makes the call. Going to a river heads up, which comes the seven of diamonds. Once again, he checks and here the seven doesn't really change a whole lot. And I think with ace king, certainly going to have to go for thin value here, even though I have one pair on a fairly connected board. So I bet $65, basically just targeting hands like ace 10 and ace nine, I guess. Um, he does make the call for 65, I show my hand, and we take this one down. For the third straddled pot in a row in this video, we have Jack-8 of spades in the small blind. With an undergun straddle, action folds to me, and I think this is just gonna have to be an open for me, although super super wide, we're playing six-handed, sure. I open the $20, and the big blind and undergun player both call. Let's try to see a decent flop for us. It comes Jack-6-3, Rainbow. Top pair on a super dry board. I bet Tiny with a horrible kicker with my eight with top pair. I bet $20. The big blind makes the call and the undergun player folds. Turn comes the Ace of Clubs, brings in a backdoor flush draw. Certainly not a great card as he could have called with a lot of ace high holdings. I check and he luckily checks it back. The river comes another ace. So certainly feeling a lot more comfortable with our pair of jacks, but Eight kicker though is not really what we're looking for. I do bet a tiny amount trying to target a pair of sixes. I bet $20, basically forcing him to call with any pair. He does make the call for 20 and I show my hand. We're good. He showed us pocket nines. So yeah, take it down. Running pretty well here so far. We run a little bit better looking down at pocket kings in the big blind playing five handed. The under gun player opens up the action at $12. We get two callers to us and actions onto me. I'm thinking, really weird spot, it's a mandatory 3-bet, but what kind of sizing do we want to do here? There's 3 players here in for $12, we're out of position, but we're out of position from all of them. Uh, I size up to $75, I thought that was an appropriate sizing, but unfortunately, all of the players fold. Um, I guess we take down 36 bucks in the middle, but uh, really interesting, not really sure what sort of sizing that you would have done, but let me know in the comments below, because... Uh, obviously, I wanted to get some action, but I didn't know the appropriate sizing this time. Yeah. 
After pocket kings, we look down at one hand worse, pocket queens in middle position. The player to my right, open limps, and here certainly going to be raising to $15. Small blind makes the call for 15, and now the big blind three bets us to 55, and now on to me. Here, this big blind player isn't someone who I think would necessarily three bet light too much, and especially not out of position in the big blind here. So, the big blind looks like he has about 200-ish dollars behind, the small blind with 150-ish dollars behind. Uh, I can certainly just flat call the 55 and go multi-way to a pot, or, you know, just, just jamming in there with pocket queens. It seems like a decent spot. There's really no actual 4-bet sizings that make sense, besides just going all-in regardless. So, I think about it, and I think going all-in makes the most sense here. If he has aces or kings and we're dominated, then so be it. That's unfortunate. We can always suck out too. But I jam, small blind folds, and the big blind tanks for quite some time. Ends up making the call, and we're off to a runout. Good hand. Running really, really well here, obviously. Here in this spot, four five of spades in the small blind. We have an unlegun player opening up the action at $10. The next to act then three bets her to $25. It folds to me and here I'm thinking we're playing deep enough against the three better to make the call since we're really not playing the same range at all. I don't ever see him three betting with some sort of suited connectors or especially not in this exact scenario. So I make the call for $25, and surprisingly, the Unligun player folds. So we're trying to see a decent flop for us, and the flop comes 667 Rainbow. Not a spade out there, but we still do have the open-ended draw, so certainly good enough of a flop. I check, and he checked it back. Turn comes the 8 of spades, brings in the full rainbow, and here obviously getting there with our straight, this is what we're looking for. Here I lead out for $50, um, obviously going for value, and I bet on the larger side because I'm just trying to look like I'm bluffing, since his range now is capped to a lot of ace-king and ace-queen-like holdings, since he didn't bet the flop. So trying to just make it look like I'm trying to push him off the hands. Here surprisingly, he raises us though to $125. This line doesn't make a whole lot of sense, and I'm really confused with what he could have, but maybe he did try to slow play a overpair. But he only has about $150 behind. This is an easy spot for us to jam, hoping he has a hand like 9's plus, and just gonna have to call it off with an overpair. So I jam. Unfortunately, he folds, so I guess it looks like he was just making a move. Later in the night, he told us that he had ace-queen, so um, looked like we got him there. Uh, yeah, just he just didn't have a hand to call off his entire stack with. Hand after this, 5-6 of spades in the big blind, and we're playing 5-handed. Action folds to the cutoff, who opens it up to $12, and action folds to me. Here, I've seen him just be a little bit more aggressive in position and opening up a little bit wider, so I'm thinking I'm going to have to 3 bet him light here to $40. Um, here probably should have figured out how big his stack was because when he does make the call I look down and see he only has about hundred and ten dollars in his stack Definitely need to be more aware of that can't be three betting lights Against short stacks, but we're going to a flop with 80 in the middle the flop is Jack Jack deuce two spades Well, this is a good enough flop for us, and we only have one move here we're going to just have to jam $110 effective, putting some smaller pairs into some pretty tough spots, putting all the ace, king, and queen high holdings into an easy fold, but we could always take it down. I jam thinking we're just going to have to put max pressure on him. He tanks for a while, and then ends up making the call. So here, we're friendly. I announced that I just need spades. He says he needs the same thing, which is just awful news. Uh, obviously, we are just dominated if he's going for spades as well. He shows us 10-7 of spades. We've got four outs in the dream. Let's go to a run out. Here it is. Hi, Sam. Hey, I was on the edge. I was like, I don't know. I mean, it's not a great spot. Potentially quite the punt with the 5-6, but we have queen-jack offsuit in middle position. 
I open up the action to $12, a little bit on the looser side as the table seems fairly tight, um, besides obviously the player that had 10-7 of spades, but everyone else is pretty tight. Only the player to my left makes the call and we're going to a flop. Flop is ace high, ace 10-6, two spades and a diamond out there. Definitely just gonna have to see bet on these ace high boards, so I bet $20 and he makes the call. The turn comes the four of diamonds, brings in a backdoor flush draw, and I think it's a decent enough spot to try to double barrel again. I bet $45, and here he takes the $45 in chips from his stack, looks at them, and thinks for a little bit. Seeing this action before he makes the call here, I originally planned on just double barreling and giving up on the river, but when he thinks about this decision on the turn, seems like he's not necessarily too comfortable, and I think on a decent river, I can just blast away and try to get him off his hand. We do have a gut shot to improve to, so hopefully we can hit that. The river comes the five of spades. Spade draw gets there. This is a perfect card to bluff on. Um, he only has 165-ish dollars left in his stack. I go ahead and put them all in, and now he's thinking for a long, long time. While tanking, I'm thinking in my head, at least I put him in a tough spot, and uh, that's about it. If he does call, at least I, I had to make him make the uh, make a tough decision. But it doesn't come to that. Ultimately, he makes the fold. We get our bluff through. Let's freaking go. All right, so we're out. It was a good time. We ran it up really well at 1 3. So, like, most of my stack honestly came from the first hour, just picking up a bunch of premiums. But uh, to recap the whole day, we played those. It was a 510 promo, but unfortunately, uh, there's only one 510 table running. That table was filled with people who will take all my money in a heartbeat. So, not for us. Um, but we were in that game for $1,000. We played for 30 minutes, flopped a set, left, left up um, 1155 So up $155. And then we moved down to the 1-3 game where we were in the game for 500 out for 1190 So we'll take that profit for sure of $600, I think. Yeah, $600 um, in, I think, three hours or something like that. So overall, like really solid day, um, just ran really well. Didn't really run to any annoying spots. Uh, maybe <laughs> that five, six of spades was a little bit of a punt, but besides that, thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like, comment down below for a chip. I'm still giving one away every single video. Really appreciate and love everyone's support on this channel. And besides that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Um, yeah, thanks a lot for all the support. Peace guys.